Let's get this out of the way. I've already got two of my baked potatoes uh, in the Bing and Bang finished. And what we do is we take, uh, you know, any kind of a pokey object and we poke deep into these large potatoes. Both, watch out that you don't stab yourself. That's not a very pleasant. You, know, you want to be looking at the potato while you're doing this, basically. And uh, you poke holes all over it. I've already cleaned them, by the way. I like to clean my potatoes. At least just get some of the surface dirt that uh, because they they grow in the ground underneath, and uh, you know they get a little bit dirty. So uh, dirt and stuff. Then we take a little bit of uh, this is Greek Isle uh, Mediterranean. Olive oil, and uh, you turn it over. These are called twice baked potatoes. Uh, twice baked because they're double wrapped, and I put them in the oven for approximately. These are pretty big. These are about almost a pound a piece. So I'll put them in the oven for probably about 45 minutes, and then a half an hour on the grill. Uh, the bigger they are, the longer I keep them in the oven, um, and that's how I do it. Okay, so then we just basically double wrap it. I had a lot of requests on how I do my baked potatoes, which is why I just showed you that. So I, I just want to make sure that uh, uh, my other fellow grilling officers out there, and we're Officer S, which would be the females, um, uh, that, that I'm giving you what you need. Well, I hope that gave you what you need, needed, uh, uh, Janet, on, uh, on that. Um, Janet of, I think, Ohio or... Yeah, Jenna of Ohio. Um, so anyway, that now is basically giving you three baked potatoes. Let's go on to our primal side. Now what I have done uh, to save time is I take the knife and I cut off about the first two inches on the back side. So the top, okay, of the uh, of, of this, I do not cut off unless it's like old or it's it's a little soggy then I cut the tops off but these are fresh just got them from the market and I put a little olive oil on them and I'm using chives on my potatoes so I had some extra chives and so I threw a few chives in there it'll give it a little bit of flavor a little bit of added flavor um, you can do all kinds of things with these things these are just gonna sit on a piece of foil like this these are the big ones when they're the small ones when they're the small spears those types of asparagus spears usually just stay on for like 10 minutes, five minutes on each side, uh, towards the end when I'm doing my, uh, my tri-tip. Because I, by then I've turned down the grill, it's on, it uh, starts off at about 550, it ends at about 350 because we're just smoking for the last 10 minutes. In that last 10 minutes is when you want to put on your primal side. Now, these are a little bit bigger. These are going to go in like this. Oops, I did this, but what's new? Okay, so they'll go in like this, and for the first five minutes that these big ones, you can see these things are about a half inch thick. And they're really good, they just have a diff different flavor. And by the way, there's all kinds of asparagus. You know, I spend a lot of time in Germany, and uh, in Germany they've got the purple asparagus, they've got the white asparagus called Schwagen, and uh, they, it's really good. So there's all kinds of different asparaguses. My favorite, actually, is the uh, purple asparagus. That is absolutely to die for. But I, I love all kinds of asparagus. So what we'll do is we'll just wrap this up a little bit. And this will sit on the grill like this for the first five minutes. We'll turn it over once. And, uh, and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll take them and put them directly on the grill. It'll give them grill marks. It'll look real pretty. But it'll also crisp them up quite a bit because these are, like I said, the big ones. For the first five, six minutes, you're just putting it on to kind of get the inside really kind of softer. And we want to just grill them and, uh, directly on the grill and give it that nice crispy you know, taste. So that's, uh, that is the primal side tonight, the asparagus. Now my kid doesn't like them, so we're going to give him some ranch with some, uh, some carrots. Okay, some little baby carrots. That's what he's digging tonight on his primal side. Think about that for the kids. Now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go over part two of what I've already done. Now, this has been in what's called Solitary confinement, this tri-tip, the Mediterranean, uh, weighing in at over three pounds. It's a good size one. Uh, just like this, solitary confinement definition is in a enclosed environment in the refrigerator overnight. So depending on how long you want to uh, marinate it, uh, will determine uh, how long it's been in solitary confinement. This has been in confinement now for approximately 
20, almost 20 hours. Um, so it's been an overnight. Now, as soon as I took this off earlier, the first thing I noticed was the intense smell of the rosemary. Now, this, this, the base of the Mediterranean is two, twofold. Obviously, the Greek Isle olive oil, one. Two would be the uh, rosemary, and three would be the Greek oregano leaves. And those, just to show you, throw a few of them on that side, and kind of just kind of push it in, because this is almost like a rubber, is I'm just putting a little bit, maybe one shot, of Old Grandad whiskey. Now I like Old Grandad, but it's really good on the marinades. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll turn it over. Now we've got side two, we'll put a little bit more of the Greek oregano on it. My wife got this for me. It's really good, it's intense. And the nice thing about these intense flavors is they'll actually, most of it will be burned off and they'll like infuse into the inside of this thing very nicely. Tonight we will be doing a mesquite wood, which is my favorite when I'm doing a tri-tip. So that's what we'll be doing. Again, just a touch of a little granddad. Okay. So now, what we have in the very bottom of this thing is I'm going to add just a little bit of sauce in there. And that is like a glaze, and at the end, I'll put a little bit of mustard in what's left there, and it's almost like a San Maria style glaze that we'll have at the end. Of course, this is not going to taste anything like a San Maria style, but this will give it some kind of a nice glaze, and it'll give it a nice caramelizational look. So we'll, we'll actually deal with that at the very end. I'll show you how we glaze it at the very end in the last five to ten minutes. And then at the very end, we let it cool down so the juice is redistributed, and then we will cut it into slices, and then you will actually have that along with your primal size in your baked potato. I'm actually taking it out of any kind of wet, letting it drip dry, and there's a little bit of grates in the bottom of the blue side here, and that's going to just sit out for the next couple of hours, because it's still a little bit frozen. Now this is my glaze here, and we will add now a little bit of Dijon mustard to that. Just kind of mix it around with what you have here, like that. And then what I'll do is, I will put that on at the very end. So that's basically what we do when we're doing the Mediterranean. The, there's a couple of other ingredients that are on here that you can add into it. You can throw some, uh, some garlic on it as well. You can also throw a little bit of balsamic vinaigrette over the top of it, just a little bit, but before you put it into solitary confinement overnight. So, uh, but, but other than that, that's pretty much all you have to do. Now when we put it on, and we'll talk about this outside on the grill side, we'll put a little bit of black pepper on it, and a little bit of Mediterranean sea salt. And uh, that'll help uh, infuse some more of these other flavors. It just, there's something about salt and pepper, uh, especially when you freshly grind it and put the freshly ground uh, sea salt on it, that just makes it amazing on, on a big steak like this. So we'll do that grill side uh, with those two items. And the last thing, boy this is a long block so it's going to have to be edited out. But what we have here, and again, we're talking about the Germans here again, this is pretzel bread. Pretzel bread is very prominent in Germany, and um, their, their bakeries make it fresh every day. This is a bread I get over at Costco, they're called pretzel rolls, and they have kind of a pretzel flavor to them. Very, very, very good. Uh, one of them is good enough for one big person. Okay, here we are. Now what I've done is, a friend of mine, uh, who has a friend who lives in uh, Mesquite, Texas, has a Mesquite ranch. So he actually gave me several pieces of this. So I just cut this up myself and put it on the grill. And uh, so that's kind of fun. Now I distribute this stuff, but I have a guy that manufactures it. He gets it from his own place uh, in Texas and Oklahoma. But uh, wow, this stuff is smoking amazingly. 
so this is good stuff too and again it's got a great aroma that's the beauty about the ski after I added that really nice uh, uh, Dijon mustard this is thickened up quite nicely and the smell is amazing and we're gonna put a little bit brown black pepper on large sea salt granules you want to kind of pat it down a little bit so that it sticks to it once it hits the grill and we're going to do the same thing once we put it on the grill this is going to be side down okay. Ow. it's very hot i would recommend using the tongs so boom she's on so as you can see i trimmed off a lot of the fat no need to have any more fat on this thing than possible. And you can see I scraped away a lot of this because all it does is help flame it up. The marbling is on the inside, on the outside. I don't want anything that has to do with excessive fat. On the other side, by just adding a little bit of crushed black pepper, One thing that I forgot to mention is, and I'll put a little more on, is in the preparation phase, we actually have Greek seasoning. Obviously, this is the Mediterranean, so we want to have plenty of everything that's Greek-related that's Mediterranean to make this really kind of stand out as a Mediterranean-type piece of meat. Okay, and there we have it. Now we've got the rock salt on the sea, the Mediterranean on, close it down. Got her set at about 550 right now. These will take more like 12 minutes. So we'll put them on like this, turn them over, two and two. In the last six minutes, they'll just sit on top of the grill. It's got olive oil on it. It'll make it really crispy. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, I've got some beautiful grill marks on there. Now it's time to start applying some of the sauce. Also on the back side, you can see, we've got our asparagus, chives. Now we're going to just paint Picasso action here on the meat. As I cut that, what you would notice if you were here, in my area gray, you would notice my dog has come over because he wants to also do a little bit of a dish taste. Rock on. That Mediterranean style is just amazing. Yeah, so delish phase, pat, fantastic. Sit down, boy. Oh, yeah. What do you think? Yeah, it's just a pure yes. Daddy, I love it. You're fantastic. Keep going. Make more. Marinate often grow responsibly.